Everyone, welcome to the Grand Rapids Public School Board meeting for Monday, July 8, 2024. We welcome and appreciate your presence at this meeting. We respectfully request that you turn off your cell phones and refrain from clapping, cheering, or making audible comments. We invite you to make formal public comment during the designated times, either on agenda items, non agenda items, or both. If you're commenting on both, please fill out two separate comment cards. And uh, we'll start with the roll, Kathy. Ms. Melton? Here. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Ross is excused. Ms. Shackey is excused. Ms. Wade? Present. Ms. Davis? Here. Mr. Reitman's excused. Ms. Lewis is here. President Williams? Present. We have a quorum. All right. Next, we need approval of our agenda. Um, all in favor of approval of our agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? All righty. Celebrations. Dr. Robbie. Good evening, everyone, and happy summer. Um, summer is always a, a fun time. The days are longer, but they're also kind of, they feel a little shorter, too. Um, we do have some things that have been taking place across our district. Um, I'm going to invite up Ms. Jen Brock and Ms. Amy Powney to talk about the elementary math lab and teaching work, teaching works experience that has been taking place this summer. So if these two leaders will come forward and join us. Good evening, uh, President Williams and uh, other members of the board, and Dr. Roby. I'm going to let Amy go ahead and speak to the email and teaching work celebration as this was her baby putting it all together. <laughs> Just a group effort of coordination, but yes, thank you for having me. Um, so on the week of June 24th to the 28th, we had the Elementary Mathematics Laboratory. It took place at Ottawa Hills High School, uh, and it was facilitated by teaching works that uh, we've been partnering with. Um, so Dr. Deborah Ball from the University of Michigan and her team. Um, and basically what the experience uh, included was Dr. Deborah Ball and um, Darius, her colleague, uh, teach a classroom of our scholars. So they were our rising fifth graders, fourth graders from uh, three of our buildings that uh, participated. So we had about 21, 22 scholars that participated and they come in and they do a mathematics instructional experience for the entire week. So they meet with our, they meet with the scholars in the morning, uh, first thing having breakfast with them and meeting them and greeting them and then there's a classroom setting and within that classroom lab setting, it's considered a lab because some of the participants can sit in live and some the rest we were out in the mall area at Ottawa Hills and it was streamed into us. And so in the experience, before they get started, when they're, uh, the team is welcoming students, uh, Deborah Ball and her colleague Darius come out to debrief uh, the morning to talk about, uh, or pre-brief I should say, the morning about what they're going to be doing, the reasons behind it. So the experience is really an, an opportunity for teachers and staff to experience high quality teaching practices that are meant to disrupt patterns of inequity and injustice. That is the goal of Teaching Works, and so uh, they do this through the, the lens of mathematics they choose, but all of these practices are across all disciplines and can be used, so um, they really spend a lot of time in talking intentionally of how they build relationships with the students, how they are there to lift up the students' voices and participation, giving them, giving them agency and a sense of belonging to their community. Uh, during the week. They tackle some of the hardest topics in mathematics, so we, they did a lot with fractions. Um, that was a big part of the week, like different activities that had to do with the fractions and then different computational things. Um, but they, they talk about and talk to the participants in advance about what they're doing that day, why they're doing it, intentionally decisions that they're making, and then at the end, after the, the learning experience of the scholars, they come back out and they debrief, like what they saw, observations they made, things they wanted to remember about what different students contributed and how they're going to build upon that the next day. So really walking participants through the thought process of high quality teaching practices that do all of those things. So it was pretty exciting and you can see um, that we had scholars from Burton Elementary, Mulek and Sherwood Park and then we had staff across the district representing all four quadrants from this list of schools um, and not all math teachers, right? So people who were there um, that do other disciplines as well because like I said, it's cross-disciplinary. Um, our scholars would then have uh, lunch with the, the teaching work staff and then after, um, or I'm sorry, 
with our staff. So we had then three of our elective teachers, our art, music, and an art, music, and PE teacher from GRPS, who then spent the afternoon uh, doing programming with those scholars. So they had a full day experience and got to do art, music, and PE all afternoon after that math lab experience during um, the daytime or the morning time. Um, and so, and then in the afternoon, while they were doing that, the participants attended uh, breakout professional learning sessions. So they had different ones that they could choose which one they wanted to spend the weekend. So definitely um, deliberate things about like essentials for a strong start to the school year. So really digging into those practices that we watched Dr. Ball and her team do to, to bring in that sense of community and build those relationships with kids right in the beginning. They sort of built upon that. Um, different things like that were happening in the afternoon session for teachers. So yeah, it, was a, it was a great week and really a collective effort by all the departments across the district to make this happen for our scholars. Um, it was wonderful. It was a great experience. Um, some of the uh, highlights um, were, oh yeah, did you wanna go to the, the celebration at the end? We can talk about that first. Um, at the very end of the week, there was a, a celebration um, that, it, that they had for the scholars where they gave scholars some, a U of M shirt and um, a little bit of swag, but then more importantly, they spoke to each scholar individually, brought them up and gave them all of their, their things and the work, their notebooks that they'd worked on all, all week and um, specifically spoke to them about things that they had noticed about how they contributed to class. Noticing how they shared their thinking or how they made uh, certain comments in their notebooks throughout the week uh, of how they learned from someone else and different strategies and thought processes that they recognize students doing and acknowledge that and encourage them to use that as they go into fifth grade. So it really, really was focused on, on helping scholars to just feel as though they're making, uh, building a strong mathematical identity and really con thinking about their contributions to class, how important it is to to and how valued their contributions are, and then also how important it is to really listen and respond and learn from each other. Um, and so to go back to uh, the feedback, um, these were just some comments. They did some surveys. Um, I won't read these all to you, but there were specific things that stood out to participants and as well to our scholars. Definitely comments from scholars really loved because every day the students worked in these notebooks. They kept like a journal and they would write notes, they would do example problems, they would do notes to self, there would be like a reflection question at the end of the session every day. And every single day, Dr. Ball and uh, Darius would make comments, specific comments to students, giving them feedback on their thinking and their contributions that day. And they really looked forward to it. They really looked forward to hearing that those really individualized comments from, the, from their teachers and um, sometimes wrote them notes back and things like that. Um, they also really enjoyed the process of creating a class contract and a teacher contract. So um, there was a contract for the scholars, but also a contract for the teacher. Uh, the teacher's promising, I will do this for you. What do you, you know, what do you need from me? And um, they were very adamant about where's my copy of that contract, because I'm holding you accountable to this contract. So um, they, they enjoyed that part of it as well. Um, and so it was really great to watch them grow. And it was really wonderful to hear all the comments from the participants, from our teachers and staff on their takeaways. So um, things that you can see, they, they did some strategies where every night a part of the, they did have homework and a part of their homework was to teach something to a family member. And so it was to really think about, you know, what did you, what was your experience of teaching this to someone? How did that, um, what was that like? Um, and, and then just a lot of the, the uh, comments from staff about how much they learned from hearing the thought process of Dr. Ball and Darius and like the that we just don't get in teaching we don't get enough opportunities right to go observe someone else and really be able to hear their thought process in that lab setting we don't you know it's hard to get those opportunities so it was really really wonderful um, and so it was just a great experience overall. The, the scholars just enjoyed it every day. We had some that had said, you know, parents had said, well, they can only come three of the, of the days that week because we're going on vacation. Then all of a sudden that kid was there every day that week. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, they really wanted to be there. They looked forward to it. Um, and so uh, it, was, it was just a great experience overall. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Any questions, colleagues? Did you mention how the scholars were identified? Um, so, uh, Dr. Lovelady Mitchell and uh, Bridget Cheney, Executive De Director Cheney, had a discussion about which scholars, uh, which schools, and then it was just, it was opened up to any fourth graders from those three schools, um, and so they just, there was an application process, we, there wasn't anybody turned away, but um, there was, that was 
how they chose. They just picked some schools, and then from there, the any scholars that were interested participated. And we did offer door-to-door -door busing so that that wouldn't be an issue for any families. It wouldn't be a barrier. Um, and so it was great. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, and we are at our first opportunity for public comment. Doesn't have anything no. over there. I'll check the other no, side. Going. Going. <sighs> Any cards, Julie? No. Okay, wonderful. Then we will move right on to our secretary's report. Yes. Um, the City Board Liaison Committee meeting will take place Wednesday, July 17th at 3 p.m. in the Lyman Parks Library Building. The Finance Committee meeting will be on Tuesday, July 23rd at 4.30 in the Board Chambers. Thank you. And we do not have any committee chair updates for tonight. And I uh, don't see our person here from the Foundation, so we'll go forward to the Superintendent's report. Good evening again. Um, a couple of things I want to remind folks of. On August 5th, it's the state primary election, and you probably have started to see flyers and other kind of information in your mailboxes. Um, we have a couple of things, and I'm not going to speak on individual candidates, but I want to make sure that I highlight a couple of things related to Kent County Ready by Five Early Childhood Millage um, that is on the ballot as well as the Kent County Sports and Entertainment Facilities proposal. And so just to remind people to certainly go out and vote to ensure that your voice is, is heard. Um, Harvard training. So earlier this summer, there were seven of us who went to the Harvard um, DataWise week-long um, program, and it's specifically around looking at data um, from an improvement process. There are eight phases of that, which include organizing and collaborating your work, building assessment literacy, creating a data overview, digging into student data, examining instruction, developing an action plan, and a plan to assess programs, and then act and assess. So it's a very tight cycle of how do you look at data, and what specifically are you looking at and then figuring out what your data is telling you and then kind of moving through a process of um, what should be recommended and what should be included. And so there were a couple of folks, seven of us, from across the district. Um, we had a, a principal, we had um, a couple of directors, myself, to really just kind of examine this process. And there were about 104 folks from across the nation as well as um, um, as far as Brazil, so we had some some folks from Brazil, and just looking at what does what is data telling you, and so we went through a couple of different experiences around looking at real data for different school district communities and how they have used data to improve achievement and and um, and inform their practices. And our seven, what we are committed to this fall is because it's a week long and it's quite intense and you know we're at Harvard and so there's lots of um, really robust, rigorous discussion and we want to make sure that we do this well before we roll out because one of the things that we talked about as a team is being very intentional of not rolling something out until we have kind of not have mastered it but just have had enough experience. And so um, we are taking one particular school to look at their data cycle and we're going to work through it over the next six months or so before we go big time so we're going to we're going to do our own little small pilot to make sure we're able to handle it and and again it's about looking at data and using data to inform practices um, many of our districts across the nation so you know you had from everywhere from california texas um, New York and such, talked about most school systems are data rich. You have a lot of different kind of entities that give you data and it's what are you doing with it and how do you streamline it so that you're able to kind of tease out what questions are you asking and then how are you implementing those practices. And so that was kind of 
it was more about looking at the process of what data is and then how do you really inform um, practices in, in a system. And it was a challenging experience and I'm really looking forward to bringing that forward for our district as a whole, but I do know and our team wisely encouraged that we get better at kind of like how do we examine data for ourselves before we bring it to scale for the district as a whole. And so um, be looking forward to some information from this particular school once we get underway into the 24-25 school year. And that concludes my report for this evening. Questions, I should say, questions that you might have. All right, seeing none, we will move on to our next um, item, which is action item for purchasing agenda. Are there um, any questions with regards to the purchasing agenda? I'd like to move to discuss the last five points of our purchasing agenda C, or I'm sorry, 3C, one through five. Is there a question, specific questions that you have with regards to the purchasing agenda? Um, no, just a discussion around that component of it. Well, I think if you, if you have a point that you want to bring up, I think, um, again, it's just a matter of... We don't have quorum anymore. We can two. Or do we have quorum? Yeah, we can. So, okay, so you, you, you just speak. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, as I wrote today, uh, that the final components of today's purchasing agenda speak to um, the facilities master plan. Um, and the facilities master plan is um, a, a, was a whole lot of work and definitely supported by our whole community up here, the, the board, um, and, and really well represented by the community as well. Um, and so, what I'm asking uh, to discuss is that idea again that we, ta we take one deeper layer before we invest this much money into our school buildings. Um, and that one deeper layer really can, um, can fold in what uh, is needed across the board. So from our staff and the goals that they have to the, to the city and the need for housing, the community and for sustainability. So I had asked for um, us to take a pause for the next couple of weeks to get a plan around those bigger priorities. Bigger meaning more of the umbrella, not bigger meaning more important, but just um, more of an umbrella. So that when we move forward with the millions of dollars that we have through the bond, we know they're in a direction that lines up with sustainability, with our city's housing needs, with our um, the really important goals that we've set as a district. Um, I believe that if we spend money without a really clear direction as to where we're going, we very likely won't hit our mark. Um, so that's my suggestion is to pause on those five, pull them out um, so that we can vote on those separately or, or even pause those. Well, I think um, I'll say, as I, I said earlier, this work has been very deliberate by a number of people for many years, and this board unanimously supported us going forward. This is a part of the FMP plan. This has not been a, um, a change to where we are or where we're going. I think we've been really clear about what our expectations are, and we do have our strategic themes that we're moving forward with. I think it is concerning that there's this constant um, kind of almost, it almost seems a, a, like a little bit of um, redirection around things that we've already given direction for. And I think it's uh, a little bit where we have to make sure that we are, again, progressing these things. We have experts um, at the district level who have been unpacking this work for years. And um, I think um, some of our limited knowledge to that may not necessarily um, honor the work, if that if that makes sense. And so um, I um, I think we have done that work, and I think we are where we are for this phase. The next phase of work includes kind of what we're going to do with our assets and things of that nature. And we're still we're not quite in that phase yet. And I think we should allow the plan that was laid to be implemented the way it was designed. And so um, those are kind of my concerns. I feel like some of this is like asking us to do stuff out of order from way, the way we've been delivered to work to line things up. And I think there's more than one way to get there. And so I, I feel like we've already put a plan in place. And again, we've utilized the experts both in the district and outside of the district to come up with this plan. And I don't have a, a solid reason for upending that in my eyes. 
Well, I agree with you, Kim. I just think that all along we have been making sure that this money has or is going to be spent where it will do the most good. Also, I think, you know, when we were discussing the initial closing of buildings and so on, that's the one thing I remember going around with Dr. Roby to the uh, schools and talking and is the idea that um, um, we're not going to just leave that building hanging out there empty. We want something uh, constructive done with that. And uh, if in, in the case of which one did we just tear down? I forgot. Kensington. Kensington. In the case of Kensington, that was beyond hope. People wanted to buy it for a lot less than what it was listed. And they thought because they wanted to bring in some sort of a youth club or something that we should say, oh, you know, okay, fine. But the question then becomes, um, well, who's going to continue to pay for ta taxes uh, just because they're doing something good for kids, which obviously we all will honor. But, you know, it does come down to where do we want to put our money and um, what kinds of decisions are we going to be making for the long haul? And uh, that was the thing that I guess, you know, I really never considered about, uh, what would happen until I started with Dr. Roby and these trips around the board or around the district and listening to her and the kinds of things that uh, she had to say and the idea that we were doing this in a very structured way. All of it was according to what our strategic plan and all of the work that we had done in the past. So um, I, I guess I don't see any reason why we should pull those and that we should just continue. And I do believe that when the time comes that we need to make those decisions, that those decisions will be made by all of us. And uh, so I just think at this time we should pass this uh, purchasing uh, agreement and then um, move on and see what happens and what comes later. Ms. White? I do have a, a question about when we discussed, um, when we approved the plan, there was um, language that we would up, like meet again about the plan and make revisions throughout. And so it's like, like, at what point do we do that? Well, we are not even a year from when we last reviewed it, but also the review of the plan was, uh, and when we talked about that was to be based upon, not like reviewing the plan to totally upend it and change it around and do all this other stuff. The plan was if we learned, we got, like I said, for instance, our enrollment at this particular area over on the Northeast Quadrant increased by 50%. Now we may say, oh, now how do we address that? We may need to address that in our FMP plan as we go forward with what, what school we're going to keep open or close, adjust to that, or make adjustment based off of construction costs have increased 25%. And we had this much money allotted, and now that is going to cost us 25% more. How do we adjust the budget accordingly to address those type of issues? Um, I, I, I remember when we talked about it, that was kind of the ideal about reviewing it and being able to, again, adjust based on where we were for the time, if there was something, again, around enrollment or construction cost or things of that nature that we need to modify the plan. And um, we, like I said, I think we just did that right before the uh, bond passage, October, October-ish. And so I would think that we would um, kind of stay on that cycle. We are getting the updates too, so it, again, depending on when an update came in or what that update may include, we may make changes even sooner than that. So that would be a review as well. So for instance, if again, we just learned that, for, if we learned that, oh, the per pupil cutting is this, that, and the other, blah, 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 or we lost this many in enrollment, and you know we lost another 5,000 students in enrollment, uh, I would hope we not wait to October <laughs> to decide what we're going to do, because that is information that's brought into us that we would have to, as this body, look at and say, what pivots do we need to make? What changes do we need to make to this plan, given this new set of knowledge and information that we re we've received? So have we, has, have we received some information that is saying um, that the amount of money that we have is not enough for, you know, this building at Aberdeen. 
or is it Aberdeen? No. That's not Aberdeen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aberdeen. New Aberdeen. New Aberdeen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is there is there any possibility, and I think that's kind of what Sarah's point is, we want to make sure that there's no possibility that we are limited in what we can do to make sure this is a world-class facility. A couple of things. And so when we look at, and I'm going to answer your question, mm -hmm. but I just want to make sure a couple of the items that are under C through one through five, mm -hmm. um, from a timeline standpoint, there's already work that has gone into play, um, specifically um, Coit, where this is impacting for the, this may have some impact on the fall, as well as um, Innovation Central with the auditorium and different things. And so to kind of pull those aside is, is one thing, because the work has already kind of been approved and has um, started. Um, Aberdeen and Riverside um, might be an opportunity for further discussion, but keep in mind with the timeline that has been shared, backing up, and I'm, I'm, I'm just saying backing up, there's some consequences of what that will mean for schools based around that F and P timeline that we've already presented. And so nothing lives in a, in a vacuum mm -hmm. from the standpoint of, you know, you do one thing, it has impact intended or unintended consequences with respect to that. Um, as far as um, projects and updates, the board has asked for some updates periodically around projects. Um, Mr. Smart and team presented, I want to say in May, was it May? Um, updates as to where projects are right now. And also for our board, because again, once you kind of start the process through pulling it back um, there are some other consequences especially if, as contracts may have been signed um, there's some financial implications for for that to say well we're now going to pause and so again that's an unintended consequence or not um, and the last thing I will say is that our board as part of the overall reimagining the district and reimagining, or you know, with our FMP process, said that we do need to look at this as a kind of a collective and a whole annually, and and so if there needs to be tweaks as we are entering 24-25, there's some things that already have started, just like I just described, but then December of 2024, we might need to say where are we based around what we've done in the last 12 months and where do we need to make changes? Where I think it becomes challenging for our team is if the board is pulling apart different components of it, it's hard, it's like stutter steps where it's hard to get started and then it's parts of it are gonna be pulled back because there's some implications in that. And I'm not saying that um, if there's a reason to pull it back, then let's have that discussion, but if it's a preference to pull it back, that's something very different, if that's fair. Mm -hmm. and, and, and with three, and, and the last thing I will say, with $305 million, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, so I'm not, and we are so appreciative of our community for supporting the vision that we've cast and the work that we intend to do, and we have engaged people for the last two and a half years around just kind of what that might look like. We always knew, and this board was very committed to, we could have asked for more, but that would have had, the implications would have been to um, increase taxes. And this board was also very concerned about what would that impact the citizens of the community and wanting to hold on a no tax increase bond. And, and so, 305 million will only go so far. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to be good stewards of district resources um, and do as much as we can, but also knowing that there that would have never satisfied every single thing that we would have wanted to do. And in that, even projecting out for the next five years, 10 years, our needs may change. And we want to also be adaptable to that as well. Uh, to your point, though, there was not anything new that came forward that would. Uh, 
require a pivot from mm -hmm. Mr. Smart and the team. Thank you. Did you want to say some other? I have another question, but not about that. Yeah. So I can wait. Yeah. I'll, I'll stay on this topic for one second. Um, so I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, just about the implications that our decisions today will have for the next, you know, 100 years. And while I, I'll personally say I don't understand everything about facilities, I don't understand everything about, you know, the technology that might go into a, you know, uh, auditorium. Um, I do think, you know, there if there is cause for not concern, but if there's if there's something that needs to be addressed, and given a few weeks, I think that would, I don't see why that would be a huge issue. But also, I, maybe I don't understand how construction works because I think if we're working on such tight deadlines that a few weeks would kind of have dire consequences down the line, that just seems like we're not doing enough forward thinking with that. And, and again, correct me if I'm wrong because I, I don't see why a couple weeks would have such consequences. Well, I think to the point, I, I have to say this really quick, our team has not brought anything forward for us to pivot from. And so I understand Ms. Melton has concerns, but our team does not have concerns that has been tasked with doing this work for multiple years. And so her concerns are indeed her concerns that has not been brought forward from this organization that we, that Dr. Roby and her team has been doing this work for years for. And so I think we have to be clear about where the concerns are coming from. Our personal concerns or how we may want to do things or how, I, and, and I'll, I'll say this for example, I have no experience in construction. Um, and so I can get a limited knowledge from reading and research. However, a person's expertise right. mm -hmm. that they bring to it, at some point I can Google search it, something to the end and I think I got the answer, but. 25 years or experience in that field, I'm going to trust that versus my Google knowledge or my limited knowledge of it from not having ever worked there. And I think that is where we have to lean into and trust the work of Superintendent Roby and her staff who do have the expertise. And even she'll say she doesn't have the expertise, but she has a team do that does. And so that team has not brought us these concerns. Um, one of our colleagues has. And I think, um, again, without having that specific knowledge base, um, I, I say dissent noted, um, but I don't, um, I, I'm not, I appreciate you, I do, but when the professional tell me, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take the, um, you know, I, I personally would not take the um, opinion of me over the opinion of the professional in the space. And I do have my thoughts about some things, but again, in the end, I'm not the professional and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna lean into their knowledge versus my limited knowledge and their experience. So I would encourage this board to do the same. Well, and I would, I would like to say, first of all, I, I have spoken with Ms. Milton about some of the ideas she has, and I do believe she is an expert in a lot of these areas um, and, and has some wonderful ideas. And um, I think sometimes for me, the line is blurred between board work and admin work. Um, and to your point, President Williams, I think in my head, I see the process working kind of how you were saying, like when, when the district comes to us and says, <clears throat> as we're moving forward, we've noticed this issue has come up, can we relook at things? Then that's where I would say the board would take some action. I also feel like we set a vision based on 0% tax increase. And I think there's definitely room to grow that vision. Um, and, and so I do believe that we could do some of that work in parallel with what has already been decided upon, if that makes sense. I don't think we need to say, well, we decided this, so that's what it is, and we don't want to grow anymore. I think there's an, there can be an and in that situation. Um, but I do worry about even the vagueness of, let's hold this off for three weeks, because to me, that three weeks could be 
six months of work, we don't know that in three weeks we would have a new vision established. There's nothing concrete about that. So I feel like for me, growing that vision works in parallel with maintaining the pace that we've established. I just want to thank you, Kim, Ms. Davis. But um, I do want to say that the timing is one thing, but doing, no, I don't want to say doing it right, not saying it's going to be done wrong. But I, I understand we want to stay on pace, but at the same time, if, say we did learn something phenomenal with, you know, in those two weeks or three weeks that changes the trajectory of how we will move, is it not worth six months of work? You know, that we could have been missed out on something that really changed the work that we, or our vision, and made something really, you know, some great decisions off of that information. So I don't, I just want to make sure that we're understanding that timing is one thing, but there's opportunities that could be missed because we are trying to stay on pace. Well, so, Ms. White, I, I, what, what I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that most time there's nothing new under the sun. And I think as these professionals have done this work, they've been exploring those things. We haven't. And so it, to me, it's almost a, a slap in the face to say, um, you're not doing your work. When in fact, again, we are not privy to all the extensive details of their work. And so because we don't know that, to say they didn't do that already or assume that they didn't do that already is, is, is yeah. I, I mean, I don't even have a word for that because I know if somebody came in to try to do my job and don't know all of the things that I do to do my job mm -hmm. and then tell me I did my job wrong, but they don't know all that I've done to do my job, mm -hmm. then that's, that's, I'm like, how dare you? How, uh, and Again, without that, and I'm not saying that there's not, um, I, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope, that, I hope yeah. that when whatever they found, they're not so, you know, yeah. we are not as a board pressuring them to stay on pace, but to make decisions that could possibly back us up. And I hope that the professionals and the people that, the experts that we do charge to do this work are comfortable enough to say, hey, something is not okay. And so I hope that us as a board is, is um, we are a safe place for them to come to us and say, hey, this ain't okay, or this is not happening. We might have to pause and rethink some things. I'm just gonna put that out there. And I think too, President Williams, that you know this arbitrary, or let's push it away for two or three weeks. Well, what if nothing happens in those two or three weeks and we come back and say, this is, Pretty much what we want, and then another week goes by, and oh my, you know, we've got all this other stuff going on. So I just don't like the idea of giving it a specific time frame because the time frames are um, often made to be broken if uh, the need arises. And that's what I think I hear you say is that stuff comes up, things come up, you want the experts to come to us and tell us what's going on and what they need and what we missed and how we can help them. Is that, is that? Thank you. Well, I, I just want to add that I, I also agree with uh, Trustee Davis's point that, again, while I may not be an expert, Trustee Melton is more of an expert. And I'm not saying that I you know, fully agree with you just because you do this work. But at the same time, you know, and I don't know for me if it's about undermining the work that, that our, our staff is doing, because I really do appreciate the work that GRPS staff is doing on this. But I, I do think that we aren't working within a cohesive vision of what we are building for our children of the future. And, you know, and of course, like uh, President Williams, you know, you say, yeah, we've been working on this for years. The, the idea of creating a, a new Aberdeen is something, right, that ju just came up recently. And while I do understand that there has been, you know, an idea of what a new school could look like possibly in, in, in past planning, this is something fairly new. And I do want to make sure that it's something that, you know, we have one chance to do it. So one you're the chance most, to get it right. You're the most concerned then about the I, I, well, I have architectural the most about, yeah, I, Aberdeen situation. Yes, that, and, and thinking about this, and you know, I wasn't going to say anything prior, but as we're bringing it up, yeah, that's one 
area that I, I do have some concern with. And again, not concerned enough to bring it up myself because I'm not you know, too, too well versed on, on facilities, but that is something that I've thought about. I think, I, w I guess I would I'd also like to challenge this board to remember our job is to set the vision. And I think we have done that. And our job is not to operate in the day-to-day -day operations. And this, uh, how that plan comes together is a part of the operations of this district. And I just want to remind us to make sure that we are functioning in our role, because as leaders, that is our function. We are to set the vision and we are supposed to inspire the superintendent and her staff to do the work to bring our vision to life. That's the, it, this, that is the way this board and this system is set up. It is for uh, to be separate. We are supposed to set the vision and then thus inspire this superintendent or whatever superintendent, but at this time she's a superintendent, this superintendent and her staff to bring it to life. And I, I believe that how they do it, we cannot again keep putting, in our, putting our hands in how they do it because then now we have taken away um, what is supposed to be her job to do, and that is what we have signed up to do, to be the vision setters and not to be the operators. And I think if that is what we want to do, then we are micromanaging, we are out of order, and we, we, on the, we need to go to the HR office and apply because <laughs> we on the wrong side of this table because we are not in operations. We are setting vision and we are setting, and, and I think our strategic plan has been clear about our vision. We want to see equity. I think we, we have been clear that we want to make sure students have opportunities. We want our facilities brought up to a standard that we, we it's, the vision's not lacking. We just sometimes want to, uh, uh, we cannot be into how it gets done. And, and so I'll, I'll make that my final word about the matter. The how is on the superintendent and her staff. That is why these two entities are set up that way. The board sets the vision, the superintendent and her staff are to implement it and bring it to life for us. And we have to allow trust. And this does not sound like the healthy board that we're striving to be when we don't have trust the superintendent to bring what we've given great vision to in our strategic plans as well as approving this master plan to do. So, I, and I have one more thought because I also don't want to have this be an all night thing. But, um, you know, I, I hear you talking about the vision and I, I, I don't mean this in, in any disrespectful way whatsoever. I and I may be ignorant to this, but I just don't see the vision being solid enough to say, okay, go build a brand new elementary school. I don't see it. I, I see, I know our vision is there through the strategic plan. However, I just don't, and, and, and it's not about trust. It's about building something more cohesive because I, I do believe our strategic plan gives us a direction to our work. I don't know if it gives us the roadmap to where we want to get. And so that's, and, and that's something I've shared with this board prior. That's something that I continue to share um, because I, I just think so much can be attached to the strategic plan that then, then anything can, can be, you know, said about the strategic plan in terms of how we're building facilities, how we're doing, um, you know, uh, but rebuilding auditoriums. Oh, well that fits under the strategic plan. So I would like to see something, again, more cohesive um, and, and giving us just a bit more direction to where we want to go as a district. So are you suggesting that the, the vision that we've constructed doesn't answer all of these issues that you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm, first of all, I'm so grateful for this time because these kind of dialogues, I, I hope we're gonna be switching to more and more when we have more work sessions. The, and there has been no complaint. So I wanna make sure if you guys go through any of the emails I've sent about this since I began last January, none of this has been a complaint or me saying I know more than anyone. It's saying, hold on, let's pause. There is something missing here still. So um, President Williams, you, you spoke of specific expectations. I, there is, there, I'm not sure what, what you're referring to as specific expectations. You've talked about experts in our district. Absolutely, we have wonderful staff in our district. No one in our district has been tasked, trained, or hired 
to think about the vision of our school district, sustainability, housing, how do we make sure that we have this alignment between what our spaces do for our students. There's no one tasked to do this. So I want to really clarify, and if you reread through all my emails and the links that I've given, and I've spent a lot of time making sure we have the information we need to make a decision, this is all saying we have to pause to clarify so that, like um, Trustee, Willie, or Trustee Lewis said, we don't have to just make decisions one at a time. We need to make decisions towards an end result that we work on together. So again, I'm not bringing any knowledge that no one else has. I'm just bringing the knowledge that we need to pause. Now, just to clarify here, I've not talked about upending a plan. I've not talked about complaints in any way, shape, or form. This is really hard work, and I'm so grateful that we're engaged in it, because this kind of dissonance means that we're changing. And when we change what we're doing, that means different outcomes can happen. It's the only way different outcomes can happen. So I'm really excited to be in this work with you guys. Whether or not you vote to have this, these five separate or not, I still believe that every time we spend millions of dollars, they should be towards a vision that is representative of what our kids need post-COVID, post, -COVID, post you know, our, our uh, 20th century um, traditions, which we are hopefully beyond right now. So I just want to be really clear that I don't want to make decisions one at a time, like some of you have referenced. Several of you have said, you know we don't have enough money for these projects, but we're going to have to make it work with what we have. I would like to pause and just say, let's make a plan that's bigger. And again, I, I don't want to repeat all the things that I've talked to many of you about, but I do believe that a plan with sustainability with the long distance like helping of our specific assets and guarding those assets and investment in our community's needs for housing is what we need before we spend another dime on any construction project. So hopefully that clarified. All right. Any additional discussion? Is there a motion to approve the purchasing agenda? As printed. As printed. So moved. Is there support? Support. Please call the roll. Yes, Ms. Milton? No. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez? No. Uh, Ms. Wade? Mr. Ross and Ms. Shakir? Excuse, Ms. Wade? No. Uh, Ms. Davis? Yes. Um, Ms. Lewis, yes. President Williams? Yes. Okay, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three. It does, not, time. it does not move forward. And next, um, are there any other um, requests with regards to the purchasing agenda? Any amendments? All right, then it will sit there. We will go to the uh, is there a consent agenda grouping. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda grouping? Motion to accept. Support. Please call the roll. Okay. Ms. Melton? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ross and Ms. Shaki are excused. Ms. Wade? Yes. Ms. Davis? Yes. Mr. Eatman's excused. Ms. Lewis, yes. President Williams, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she gave a yes for me. <laughs> Motion carries. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the, yes. Are we able to amend the purchasing agenda so that the rest of it can move forward? We, we are able to. Okay. Can we Motion go back to amend. And do that? Is that what you do? Um, if there is a motion, um, we can entertain that motion. Motion to amend the purchasing agenda. To do what? Exactly. You got to say what we're doing. What's oh, the amendment? To take, sorry, remove the yeah. uh, Can we pull well, from section C, though? I mean, because I think one and five were the in question. Or just pull a section C. Yeah, on Montessori, together. too. Riverside. Then make the, well, somebody make has to make a motion. So to make a motion, too, I think. If I can just clarify, um, did I say one and three? I mean, one in, one it's four. one and four. I think we're there was question. The others one and four. are in progress as we speak, and so why are we? Why are we just I'm, getting them now if they're already in progress? You mean Central and Coit are already in progress? We've been yeah. I mean, we've been at Innovation Central, where we've been under mm -hmm. construction. And so this is a continuation of the work that's yes been going on. Motion to Coit is not though. That's a new project. Coit is accepting new students, and one of the things that we shared, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, um, is that we would have, as they are accepting new students, that we'd have some things. Um, Will it be ready by the fall? Is that why? Mr. Um, Smart, can I call you down to speak on 
because I'm, I'm getting into the deep end of the ocean. I want to make sure. Thank you. It is. So it is Coit. Um, Coit Auditorium. Coit Auditorium. Or, I'm sorry, Gymnasium. The yeah. Coit Art. Gymnasium. Academy of Arts and Science Gymnasium at a total of $39,951. Says upgraded oh, performance audio oh. system. Oh, oh, okay. So, so, so we have two projects that uh, were previously approved by this board. One was COI, the other one was Sibley. And both projects were divided into two phases. We are right now in the construction for phase one, and that is what, that's part of phase one to do the improvements in the auditorium. Uh, phase two will be uh, a bit soon. We'll be bringing that uh, to you for approval, and that work will happen next summer. So what is going on right now is actually actually happening right now, and this was a one of the big packages that we had to rebid because we didn't have enough participation, and that's what we're bringing to you now. Not enough participation? Yeah, not enough bidders, so we had to extend the time. Okay, but not enough bidders is another, that kind of is supporting my, my worry, but yes. So yeah, I guess I'm still concerned about that too, but what that is is much more concrete than the rebuilding of Aberdeen and Riverside. So I would be fine with five being in there. Would you make the motion there? So oh, motions, oh, oh go ahead. Sorry, the motion is to amend the, con the purchase mm -hmm. agenda, pulling four. Um, number one and four from yeah. the section C. All right, is there a motion to support the purchasing agenda, removing one, four, excuse me, C1 and C4? Please call the roll. Ms. Melton? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ross is absent. Excuse. Ms. Shank is excused. Ms. Wade? Yes. Uh, Ms. Davis? Yes. Uh, Ms. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mary Shinkaris. Okay. So, may I ask yes. a clarification? Yes. So, we have approved this purchasing agenda but we are holding back those last few items. Is that my understanding? Um, so of this purchasing agenda, agenda, everything was approved less than C1 and C4. Okay. Okay. Yep. Everybody clear? Yes. All right. Then we are moving forward to our next opportunity for public comment. No. Oh, no. Nope. We are going to have a discussion with regards to board committee meetings and um, going into uh, reports at work sessions. Um, I think we've kind of already discussed this before. There's a discussion again. Um, thoughts? Well, I've been thinking about this quite a bit, and I, I'm thinking that, um, you know, I've, this is my seventh year here, and I've served on all of these different committees. And uh, one thing that I always thought is like, especially when I was on curriculum, I just felt like I was really in touch with what's going on in the district. And uh, I just thought that was <laughs> one of the most important committees that we had. But then we would come back and, you know, this is no complaint about whoever was uh, chair of the committee or anything, but, you know, they would give a sort of abbreviated uh, discussion of what had gone on in the meeting and it didn't really help the rest of the of the group and I think that um, you know having served on policy I don't know that we have to have these meetings when um, you know our uh, uh, lawyer can come with these things because my experience being on the policy committee was many of the things that we had to change were uh, things that the state said we had to change and we didn't have any real uh, opportunity to discuss it or to vote no or whatever. So I'm just thinking like, you know, we have a, a meeting where we really discuss curriculum. And then maybe we have a meeting where we get into agenda and policy. And then we have a financial, uh, and then we could also do all the facilities things with the financial. But these reports just come so that all of us have the same kind of information. I, I agree, but also um, the only reservation is that in some committees, I've only been on four now, I think, um, like the Academic Achievement Committee, there's a lot to report yes, out yes. in that area, and I'm just 
wondering how they're going to get that type of information to the board um, as far as presentations in the small amount of meetings we have and um, probably the finance committee meeting as well like a deep dive into the finances is probably necessary so but I don't have like a strong you know feelings about not doing them it's just that was like just wondering like how we'll get um, that pertinent information in those presentations which are very healthy um, I think Ms. Davis, were you about to say something? I saw you. I was just going to say, I think um, the work that we've been doing in our retreats, our work days, um, is pointing toward creating those ends goals. And I think that um, we've had some discussion there as far as uh, maybe some lines are blurred because we get so many details yep. as a board and that maybe we don't need every single detail, but um, that when we do get information, uh, I am excited that we'll all be getting the same information right, because right. I think we take a lot of time just explaining mm -hmm. to each other what we've heard. And then you know how it works in the telephone chain. We're not getting <laughs> directly from the source. So I'm excited to try this. I think anything that we do is obviously not set in cement mm -hmm. if it if it doesn't seem to be working we can always mm -hmm. you know add a committee for a while if we think we need more work but um, i think this will open up some opportunity for um just i'm hoping we're all more on the same page because we're getting all the information at the same time if that makes sense okay no, I, I agree with you, uh, Ms. Reed, because obviously there's so much that goes on in the academic committee, and that's the kind of information I feel that at least I want to know more about that. Obviously, I want to know about finances and all the other things, but uh, maybe it's because my background is in education. I just think that, you know, the curriculum is so important, and I think that, you know, like when the um, presenters came here today and we discovered all this stuff that they were doing with professional development and having all of our teachers engaged in that, or not all, but many of them, you know, that's the kind of thing we need to know about. You know, and that we need to uh, understand that the teachers are getting this information because very often we'll hear from uh, folks that, well, who said we should do that or who decided that was a good idea? And I think we should have the answers to those questions. And I think, you know, if we have a uh, evening for curriculum and that we focus on curriculum, or maybe we do it at a, a work session, but I, I know that there's so much that goes on in curriculum that we don't hear about because it's, there's just too much to come here and give a five minute report. I have a question. So maybe this is a retreat question. I can wait, I can wait, I'll write it down. Okay. Anyone else? Support what you guys have all said, yeah. Okay. Well, we have had discussion with regards to it and um, much like at the retreat, there seems to be a lean in to go this way and so, um, I think based on what we've heard then and what we're hearing now, I would like to, um, again, bring it up at the work session when some of our colleagues are here. But mm -hmm. I think for the most part, we already kind of got mm -hmm. a little gauge about how people feel about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we have to labor it. It'll be a, just a quick conversation. Um, so I will move us along to our next uh, opportunity for public comment. Ms. Downs-Lewis. If there are any individuals present who wish to address the board, please fill out the public comment card located at either entrance of the board chambers. Please read the rules on the back of the comment card concerning policy and procedure. We have two public comment sections on the agenda. The first one is public comment and board agenda items. Agendas are located by the comment cards. The second public comment opportunity is for commenting on non-agenda items related to the business of the district, but are not topics of the current agenda. If you wish to comment during both public comment opportunities, you will need to fill out separate cards. You must fill out the card and indicate what you wish to talk about. You also have to have your name on it, and um, the board assistant will collect those and make sure that uh, President Williams has them. We ask that speakers refrain from making abusive statements against board members, employees, volunteers, or contractors. Speakers are encouraged to present complaints about specific board members, employees, volunteers, or contractors through the appropriate process established under board policy 9450. 
Individuals will be invited one at a time to the podium to address the board. Before beginning your comment, please state your name. At that time, we will start the timer, allowing each individual three minutes to make their comment. One minute notice will be provided by flagging a red card, Mr. Rodriguez. And um, after three minutes have passed, we'll let you know that your time is up. Board members, do not respond to public comment. Concerns will be brought to the attention of the appropriate staff. We value your input and thank you for sharing with us. Right. You can and just do it. Yeah. Our first, uh, um, okay, I'm, I'm trying to read it the way he has it on this card, which is different. And so I'm not sure if this is DeAndre Jones. Is that how it is? You normally put D Jones, and so I want to make sure I read it as is. So respect the way you want to be called. <laughs> Sorry, I was writing too fast. I put I was supposed to put D Jones, but I put DeAndre Jones. Okay. I don't ever call myself DeAndre. <laughs> How y'all doing? I'm D Jones, a passionate entrepreneur and visionary. I'm here to speak to you guys about some esports initiatives. So I've developed the esports league called the Youth Justice Influence League, which I developed in partnership with the 17th Circuit Court. Um, and I developed this league because I know the school to prison pipeline is a real thing. And uh, I was a kid that grew up in a criminal justice system. I spent a lot of time in the juveniles and in residential homes. And so I know that a lot of our kids um, in Ottawa Hills play NBA 2K. I know it's a title that an organization, uh, the president of myself, which is the Michigan High School Esports Federation, he was going to come here with me to speak to the board about all of the titles and the educational opportunities and actually building the synergy. He couldn't make it today. But he will be coming here with me to the board to speak to you guys about really building some synergy and really helping us create a good educational system and pipeline for uh, esports to careers instead of the school to prison pipeline. I also have this esports energy drink right here on my birthday, which is in a couple days. I'll get full power over this esports energy drink. I'm a cancer. I'm not the sensitive guy, though. And so I'm going to be very happy to really uh, push this initiative with my global vision of what I have to be able to give back to the community. Miss Wade, this eSports Energy drink is for you because you asked for one. So I didn't forget what I said. I was going to bring you a drink. It's really good, and it's organic, too. It's really good for you. And so um, I'm really happy about these initiatives because I get to bring the students that are on probation that go to GRPS schools to the Detroit Lions facility, the Ford Fieldhouse. It's going to be an incentive that we do. So once the kids go through, uh, the summer and they play NBA 2K and they get an education on finances from Fifth Third Bank. Uh, even Congresswoman Hillary Scolton said that she had actually come speak to the kids. So I know these things are powerful. I know esports can be a powerful initiative. I know it can uh, help our school district. I know it can bring economic change. It can help bring a lot of uh, positive things to our community, which is definitely needed. And we need people like uh, Congress to uh, see the uh, school issues like the school to prison pipeline helping us uh, change those outcomes. So I'm really excited to be able to push this esports initiative, be able to build infrastructure, partner with the school district on some cool initiatives. I'm even speaking to Champion to try to do an esports logo competition where I can hopefully partner with you guys to uh, have one of the students design an esports logo and they can actually brand that logo on Champion brand it to be an actual official partnership with Champion. And that's something I'm trying to do right now. So I'm doing all of these cool initiatives. I'm very passionate about esports. Uh, my birthday is going to be soon. And I'm just very happy to give back to the community. I put a lot of love and passion and um, a lot of time into these initiatives. And it's really paying off. So I look forward to bringing kids that are in a criminal justice school system that goes to GRPS GPS schools to the Detroit Lions facility to check out the Ford Fieldhouse. I think it would be cool. And I'm looking forward. I also have a, a Fortnite competition October 12th which is a Saturday that I look, I'm going to be getting you guys that flyer. I'll be continuously speaking about that because I know a lot of students play Fortnite. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Yvonne Mibra. Oh, Lara. Oh. I was right quick, too. <laughs> <laughs> that one's on me. Um, Yvonne Mibra. Hello. My name is uh, Yvonne Malara. I am the head secretary at Union High School. I've worked for GRPS for going on 20 years. Uh, it has been one of the honors of my life to serve those uh, constituents of Grand Rapids Union High School. I don't want to get emotional, <laughs> but I probably will. I'm very passionate. Uh, I don't even know where to start, so I'm going to try to keep it short. I just want to speak to the future of GRPS and just to be clear, when 
SEL came out, social emotional learning, I was so excited. Um, we can do some great things with it. I am so passionate about that. The problem is that I'm failing to see the leadership embody what it means to have emotional intelligence. Um, character is who you are when nobody's looking. And I've seen a number of these people, I, I, I hate to call them leaders, and I don't want to libel and I don't want to slander, I'm just here to tell my truth. Uh, people in positions of power in, in this district um, walk around with a, a sense of entitlement. I, I feel like they think that I work for Franklin campus, and that could not be further from the truth. I work for the students and parents and constituents of Union High School. G Franklin campus should work for us, and they've got it twisted. For 20 years, I've watched these people walk around with impunity, talking to people any kind of way, addressing them any kind of way, uh, all caps emails, screaming matches with your subordinates. It's disheartening, uh, and I don't see we're training these leaders or training these people in positions of power to be better leaders. We keep putting different lipstick on this pig. We're going to rebrand. We're going to reimagine. But we're not changing. Always worried about the optics, never doing the self-reflection. Uh, and I'm just here to say my piece. If we're going to move forward with these people that are still in these positions of power, what we're reaping right now are the seeds we sowed 5, 10, 15 years ago. One minute. We're, Sorry, one minute. Yep, uh, we're losing ground, we're losing credibility, because we're not addressing the root issues. Um, we know that there's a toxic environment, the call is coming from inside the building. If you don't want to hear it, it's, it, it's just going to continue to burn down. We see we have lost our director of HR, uh, director of special ed, uh, director of communications. I don't know how much more we need to lose before we realize we're doing it the wrong way. Uh, it's not an, it, it, SCL is not some multi-part pass. You just whip out whenever you want to sound good. It's an embodiment. And I'm begging that we find these leaders that actually embody that. Thank you. Thank you. Superintendent comments. I don't have any. Okay, board comments. Ms. Wade. I didn't have any comments, but I do want to thank um, Ms. Malara for her comments and just um, as a leader, I, um, I understand how modeling the things that we press on our, on our uh, staff and our students is so important. And so I just wanna raise up her comment today. Thank you. Ms. Milton? Yeah, I just, I'm really excited to do this work with you guys. I, education is, so important. Like I remember being in college and being like, I will never be an educator. My grandparents, my parents were all educators. I'm like, it's not me. And I just felt this like vortex of pull into education and never expected to stay in Grand Rapids, to be honest. I'm from the Chicago area, never expected to stay here. And I have completely fallen in love with the work that we do. And I'm so excited to do it with you guys. And just want to submit that like in every way, when I speak, it is out of like love for what's going on in the district. And please call me out on that. And if there are, I know there are many other ways to do the work we're doing. So please always uh, community and board uh, colleagues and staff, please check me on that because I get so excited about the work that we're doing that sometimes I get carried away with myself. So again, thank you for the chance to be up here to the public. Thank you for letting me do this. And thank you for putting up with me, colleagues. Mr. Rodriguez. Um. I want to echo what uh, Trustee Wade has said, um, not just Ms. Malara, is that, I see what you said? Miss Yvonne, okay. Um, and, and Mr. Jones and everybody that is in the community that is passionate about this work, that is what I love to see. I, I, I know that there's countless number of people in our community that are standing behind our students, behind our, our schools and our district. Um, helping fuel this work. And so I just wanted to say I appreciate you two specifically for being here, but just everyone out there um, doing the work. Um, secondly, uh, colleagues, I did put legislative priorities um, in front of you all today. So this is something um, that our uh, lobbyist, uh, Stephanie Simus with McAlvey Merchants and Associates has put together. Um, and so she asked to um, give this out to you to look it over to see if this is, you know, what you would like to have her represent 
um, at, at, in Lansing um, as she talks to our lawmakers. Um, she would love to have some notes. Uh, if you have any, send them, send them my way, send them her way. I'll, I'll send her email out if, if folks don't have it. Um, but yeah, just in the next you know, week or two, just kind of look it over and see, is this what we would like to have um, as our priorities in Lansing as, as a school board and, and for GRPS? That's all. Thank you. Ms. Davis? No comment tonight. Ms. Kathy Donald? No comment. And board president, thank you everyone for being with us tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to come and share. Um, we don't take it for granted and we um, uh, look forward to seeing you at our next meeting. This meeting is adjourned.